One way to make mappings is to use our bulk mappings page. You can see here I already have some images loaded down below. And up here on the options, we'll go over what these mean. So th the most efficient way to do this is if your files already are named with a SKU number as a prefix, and then it's separated from the rest of the file name by either a space or a dash or an underscore. And if that's the case, then you can choose this parse SKU from file name. We consider a SKU to be unique. So if you were to sell the same pictures in two different sizes, say an 8x10 and an 11x14, you would need different SKUs for each of those because the SKU should be unique to one particular item. If I choose the parse SKU from the file name option, you get this extra drop down here for what the separator is. The separator is just whatever's in between the SKU and the rest of the file name. The space is a default. You could also have a dash, underscored, period, or a hash. And if you roll over the question mark, it'll give you a little explanation of what parse SKU from the file name means. There's also auto select files that automatically is set if you have parse SKU from file name. So with those sets, and I choose the first one, you can see these are our SKU one, two, three. And then babies, there's four files with the same SKU. If I choose one of them, all four of them are selected. Over here on the right, you can see it separated out the SKU into the SKU field. And then it is used babies as the name of this particular mapping. Now I need to choose what catalog and what type of print. I'm gonna say this is an eight by 10 and it's gonna be one of each file. Check the checkbox giving permission and then create a mapping and now it's going to create that mapping. You'll notice once you've added some files into a mapping, they turn yellow in the background. Over here, there's another option to hide used images and they'll just disappear. That makes it easier to go down through the list and add them in. So again, I can, these are all the same SKU. There's a space as a separator. They're named deer. And I can create a mapping just by clicking on things and it automatically knows to choose the ones that have the same SKU in front of the file. So for these other options up at the top, add catalog name and add product name, that is adding that into what the rest of the file name was. And you can see down here, I duplicated a mapping. As you're uploading mappings, it does a check to see if the SKU or the mapping name already exists. And apparently I've already uploaded that one. So you can see now with add product name and add catalog name, the mapping name has become feet dash black and white, and then it's the luster catalog, and then it's an eight by 10 print. I can create a mapping from that. And if you just wanted to have one or the other, you can do that. So now it's just gonna say feet in color, eight by 10, there's three files. So now on this next set, you can see the separator is a dash. And then it says six pics of the Grand Canyon. If I leave it to the separator set to space, it's still gonna work. But if you look at what the skew is, it's now taken this dash six and separated it from what really the name of it should be. And that's because I have the wrong separator. If I change that to dash, and we'll unselect these so we can reselect them. Now it's got the right skew. Six pics of the Grand Canyon, looks like I missed the space there. Luster prints, we'll go ahead and add that in. See how my mappings are uploading. So far I've only screwed up the one. And when we're parsing out the SKU or the or even without the SKU, one thing that we're doing is that we're removing numbers at the end of the file name. So you can see these other ones all had a unique number, a sequence number at the end, but that's not in any of the mapping names. That's because we don't think it's necessary and that there should be text as the mapping name and not, and not all the numbers at the end. So we automatically strip the numbers at the end. And if there's a separator as well, like a space or a dash, we get rid of that. So I can go back up here. I'll change this back to a space for the separator. And you can see it's just gonna be called telescopes and then eight by 10 because I have the product name chosen here to add that to the end as a suffix on the mapping name. And now I'm down to some ones that don't have a SKU. If I use parse SKU from file name, uh, that's interesting. It's sort of new not to 
work because there was no space. And here you can see it thinks pretty is the skew, which it's not. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off parse skew from file name. And one thing that's going to happen that when you have when you don't have a skew, then it's no longer going to select the ones that go with the set. So these are all pretty trees. All four of these should be in the same mapping, but it no longer has a way to know that these are all the same. The skew is what makes that possible. So if you do this and you don't have a skew, it's no problem. You can still do it. You just need to manually check the files that go together. And I'm going to go ahead and get, clear out the skew. That was from when we had the skew, parse skew checked. Uh, and I still have use the product name, create a mapping. So you can queue up quite a few mappings. We're not exactly sure how many you can do all at once. Uh, I would, I you can certainly do several dozen at a time and let them upload. You need to make sure that the computer doesn't go to sleep while it's uploading and that you don't close the browser. And you can see over here that this particular mapping is uploading right now. This one here with the little timer icon is in line next. And then this is one that had an error because the mapping name already exists. The rest of these with the green check mark have been successfully created. So all we're doing here is creating the mappings. This is not a way to link them into an Etsy shop to link them to a product. You could do that off of an incoming order from here and you could search for the name or the SKU as you're doing that. Or you can go do them off of the store listings page.